Hi guys. Okay, now we're gonna bring Mary Lee in again. Can you see me? Okay. Mary Lee, can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay, well, send me your comment again, Cincinnati Jim. You guys may be able to hear the goats in the background. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I've got my little goat friends here. Okay, I see Cincinnati Gymnastics. Okay, now talk. No. Why can't we hear Mary Lee? Your hair looks cute, Mary Lee. Welcome. <laughs> no, it's really cute. You cannot? Yeah, you can't hear her at all. Are you muted, Mary Lee? Is the side of your phone muted? Kyla Bryant just said hi. Um, turn your volume up, Mary Lee. Okay. Did you hang up? Did you hang up? Turn up your volume. Okay, whoever figures this out gets a something fun. My volume is up. You guys can hear me. Ainsley says hi. She goes to CGA. <laughs> Still can't hear. Marilee's on her phone. The thing on the side is not muted. Now we're looking at her gym. It is a good day, Elena. Thank you for saying that. You guys have to understand, Marilee, Tracy, and I are the same age. We're, we're both 60. And stuff like this freaks us out because we did not grow up with the internet. We did not grow up with social media. So we just like, the worst thing right now is both of our hearts are going like this because we can't figure this out. So Okay. 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 Okay, guys. So we're going to try something spiffy and new. Okay. First of all, look at my gray hair. Okay. We're taking that off so that I can cover the gray hair. Okay. Look at all that. Ugh. Anyway, we're alive and well. So this is good. What we're going to do right now is we're going to have Mary Lee Tracy take over the account and then I'll get off, then and we'll come back on. But um, in the meantime, I can actually tell you a little bit about her because I'm sure some of you know her. But oh, someone says put her on your speakerphone, Miss Val. We'll try that next. Um, so in the comments, tell me how many Olympics, how many Olympics did Mary Lee Tracy have an athlete, one of her athletes on that team? How many Olympics? Was it one Olympic Games? Was it four Olympic Games? Two? How many? How many? Three. That's what I thought. But it's not three. Two, 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 six, eight, 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 eight. I know. I said three, two. I think she's, she's wrong. I think Mary Lee, Mary Lee, I think you're wrong. I think you had athletes on three Olympics. She had athletes on two different Olympics. Okay, so check this out. What am I supposed to do now? Check this out. This is going to be a fun trivia. 
Hold on. Okay. Does she know that? Okay. Um, here we go. Yay! I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Yay! Thank you, Daniel. Thank Thanks, you. Daniel. Yeah. Okay, so we're playing Mary Lee Tracy trivia right now. And everybody agreed, not everybody, most people agreed with me that you've put athletes on three different Olympics, Olympic teams. Nope. Two. We think you're wrong. <laughs> well, um, the last one was an almost. I was at Olympic trials. Okay. Would you lower your volume just a little bit? Because I think you might be echoing now. Okay. okay hold next, on. Next, okay, I'm good. Okay, so you guys, this is fun. So next trivia question about Mary Lee Tracy, okay? And this will be a multiple choice. She has coached how many athletes onto our USA Gymnastics national team? So how many national team members has she coached? Is it 10? Is it 15? Or is it 28? Do you know the answer? I think so. 17. No, you're, no it's 10, 15, or 28, not seven. <laughs> look at it. Look at They don't know multiple choice. Have fun. 28. Yes, Rena, you get it. Daniel, you get it. Did you know that? Really? No, I didn't, Val. I didn't know. Thanks for giving me that piece of trivia. Yeah, you, you, that's a lot of athletes, Mary Lee Tracy. That's a lot. You've been to this been a, I've been around a little while. You have. Okay. So Mary Lee has owned and coached Cincinnati Gymnastics Academy for 35 years. And she is currently also the bar clinician for the USAG, for the developmental uh, program. She is national, world, the world seeks her out for her gymnastics knowledge. Um, and there are a few other little trivia facts that I'm going to share with you. One is she is probably the most organized human being on the planet. <laughs> so any of you young gymnasts that you like your little things in order and you have your files and you have that's Mary Lee Tracy. I am not. That's Mary Lee. She loves dogs and she's taken in quite a few dogs and she knits. She's not a great knitter, but you're a good knitter. <laughs> I can make the longest scarf in the world. <laughs> you, you can't. I kept trying to get her to make something besides a scarf. She's like, no. Okay. So, hey, you guys, we're going to turn the comments off just for a little bit because when we do comment, then we cover up her beautiful face. And I haven't seen my friend in a long time, so I want to see her face. Second of all, please, when we come back to the comments, only put up one emoji because when you put up like 85 of them, then we totally lose her. So we'll bring the comments back towards the end of this because we want to really answer all your, most of your questions. Okay, so I'm turning the comments off. I actually don't remember how to do that. Um, uh, yes, I do. The three little buttons. Okay, great. Okay, so Mary Lee Tracy, you are in Cincinnati right now? Yes, in my gym. In your gym. So I'm assuming you have been doing the Zoom sessions with your athletes. How have they been going? And share with us one, two, three things that really have inspired you, that have worked during this? Well, time. I think, you know, with our athletes, um, because we're also used to texting, we don't have a lot of eye contact and that type of conversation. And so, like, every week we have a schedule of training plans, um, event training, conditioning, and then we have a set of Zoom sessions. And sometimes it's a Zoom social hour. And that's probably one of my favorite. And I, I enjoy looking at the girls because I get their feeling. I feel their heart and soul when I can look at them. So like some days we'll go on and we'll say, okay, everybody share um, their favorite dessert. And it's just fun. It's just fun facts. And we usually do a lot of stuff like that. Then we have Zoom um, Sports Psych and um, Chop Wood and Carry Something. That's the book we're... Chop yes. Your water. Yes. 
that's the book we're training from. So a lot of the girls got it and we make a worksheet and we answer questions and it's a lot of fun. That's also a lot of fun. Then our yoga teacher does a class and then we're doing an exchange with Great Britain. And so my friend Liz um, and her team, so Liz is providing the ballet classes. We're providing the sports psych and yoga. And so we all go into the same Zoom room and mix with them. And then one of the other fun things we've been doing is having challenges with um, JC Phelps's gym. And so like, it's just been crazy stuff, like multiple add up how long you can hold a handstand and it turns out to be 25 hours and 15 minutes. So we've had some different um, fun things like that that we've been doing. Um, I've been putting some stuff up. um, So like I give the kids a format, Val, imagine that. And so, you know, like every day they have like cardio, legs, core, upper body, and then something for each event. And so then what I do is keep plugging stuff in for variety. The other thing, girls, that is great is taking other people's stuff. Like I'm much more of a Facebook person than an Instagram. My daughter has been posting in Cincinnati Gymnastics on Instagram because I'm, that's not what I usually do, but. I'll copy stuff and send it to my girls. Like if I see like Randy Parrish did a totally blast um, flip fest warm up, and we, I shared that with the girls. Um, there's just been, there's so much out there right now. The other thing we do is drills for skills. And so um, we'll have the athletes look on YouTube for skills they wanna learn, and then they share drills or what they see um, or feel by watching the things. Um, and if they specifically want to learn, let's say, a toe hect, um, I tell them to just go on and look at it over and over and over so your brain starts to look at it. Then you do some imagery of yourself actually seeing the skill. So when you come in, your mind-body connection is better and the skill is going to come quicker as long as you're staying fit. As long as you're doing, like we told our kids, if you train uh, normally, say, 20 hours a week, you need to be doing 10 hours at home. So just cut whatever amount of time you're doing at the gym. I mean, it'd be great to think we're all gonna do that many hours at home, but it's, there's not enough to do. But try to commit to half of the hours that you do in the gym and then commit your training days to doing a little bit of something for each event. I mean, vault, you can sprint, you know? Those of you that have a bed, you can jump to candle, you can jump upside down. Um, depending on what your vault is would depend on, I mean, all of you are creative. You know what you feel when you do each event. You can make up your own stuff. I mean, we're, I'm inspiring my athletes, but we're leaving a lot of the making up your bar routine or beam routine to yourself. So like I'll say, okay, girls, first skill, you know, and I'll tell someone to hold like a a wooden spoon, like it's the um, bar and to like work their arms and go through the body shapes and the movements of the skills and talk to yourself, sharp, tight, feel. Beam is easy because you're walking on the floor. And then like for actual um, floor, um, to keep your endurance up, you do like this way, like say you can do in the backyard, speed cartwheels this way, alternate split leaps coming back, dive rolls going this way, um, sassones coming this way, so that you're getting the endurance of tumble dance, tumble dance um, for your floor routine. So, and, and I know a lot of you are probably more creative than your coaches. So put together some stuff yourself for your two hours a day or whatever you've chosen to do to simulate whatever your normal training is like in your gym so that you're activating your mind and your body at the same time. So this is so great guys um i love your enthusiasm because i absolutely believe that with with their desire their creativity and with their work ethic and determination they will be just as strong if not stronger when they do get to go back into the gym i absolutely believe it but you talk about mind body connection and the importance of that. Can you break that down into like simpler terms? And yes. So mind body connection goes a lot with coaches corrections. Um, so, you know, like if you're making a mistake um, or you're missing, let's say um, a toe handstand and you keep bailing out and you keep bailing out and the coach is saying you need to hold your chest in under the bottom and on the way up. And you're like, you say, okay, coach, 
kids that are really mind body connected, they'll stand there for a second sometimes and actually close their eyes to try to feel their chest go in so that when they get up and do the skill, they can then make the correction. Um, feet is huge. Feet is huge. And one of my top kids right now, um, Lily, who might even be listening, um, doesn't have the greatest toe point in the world. And so like, I'll tell her, like Lily, just take a minute, stand in place and just feel your toes crunching the floor so you feel them. Then when you get up on the bars, you can take your toes and feel the same thing. So that's why when Val was saying, you know, you can be very creative, you know, and maybe you don't have a great mind-body connection, but guess what? Now you can get one. Um, you know, really trying to activate muscles. One time a doctor told me that, um, uh, it was a sports doctor had said to one of my athletes, um, activate, when you activate your muscles by just holding them, you're training the brain. Like you're giving the muscles repetitions. Absolutely, between visualization and just like activating, which means squeeze, um, you are training. Um, yes, it's not the same as training a full routine or doing gymnastics, but you're still activating. The other thing is when you're going through your day or your training at the end, always save a little space for an area called weaknesses. So whether it like for Lily, we save the end of the workout and she gets out her TheraBand and does all of those flex point toe exercises, does scooters on the floor. So like Val said, you want to be able to come back and feel like you have gained something. Some of it's going to be mental. Some of it's going to be physical. Um, some of you that might have fears. I mean, you can be doing repetitions of imagery of yourself doing whatever that skill is over and over and over to wash out any pathways that are negative. Um, pathways that are negative. So like every time you balk on something, that creates a negative pathway. Every time you go, it creates a positive pathway. So if you're ever like stuck on the beam and you're um, afraid to go and you balk and you stop and you do the prayer over your head and all that stuff, it's better to just get off the beam and do repetitions of go, 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 because that's a pathway that you wanna create when you go back to the beam. So whenever you're afraid of something, um, go back and do a basic that's gonna help it. And those are things that you can put at the end of your workout of things that you wanna try to really make sure you conquer. Um, during, a lot of people, it's flexibility, you know? Some people, it's core shape. Whatever it is, make sure that you are, this is a time not only to increase your strengths, but to attack your weaknesses. I love that. And we, at UCLA, we always used to say raw, R-A-W, ruthlessly attack your weaknesses. And now it's a nice. to do that. Um, I love the fact also that when you're talking about this mind-body connection, that when you, when you think of your mind as a muscle, the beauty of where we're at right now is you guys, you literally could do hundreds of mental repetitions. And guess what? Unlike the other parts of your body, you're not going to get sore. Your mind will not get sore. You're not going to have to ice your brain when you're done. Totally it, agree. It is the most powerful thing that you have in life. And those athletes that go from good to great, yes, ones that take charge and they take control of their mind. And so when Marilee's telling you about these negative thoughts, you, your goal, one of your goals, by the time you get out of quarantine or able to go back into a gym, one of your goals should be that you can visualize your routines or your skills without any negative thoughts popping in your brain. That's a great goal. And you can work on that eight hours a day if you wanted to. And I just want you to know that if you do see yourself be making a mistake or falling, it's okay. That's, that's training. You're training your mind just like you train your body. That's okay. But as she said, you just need to stop, clear your mind, and then start again. So I'll tag on to you, Val. So like I'm, I'm about, we're on the same page about this mental stuff. But like what I want to tell you guys is like when she talks about your mind, it is a, it is a, it's a fact that your mind is the strongest muscle in your body because it controls the other ones. Like if you have to sneeze, 
your mind tells your hand or now your elbow, elbow sneezes are, are the current way, but your mind tells your body to do that. So you have to understand that if your brain is saying to you, I hate the beam or, you know, I hate this event, it is impossible to improve on that event. It's impossible. Or, you know, I'm afraid, I'm scared, I'm gonna split my head open. You can say that, but then you gotta be done with it and you gotta talk it to yourself about what you're gonna do to prevent that. So, you know, uh, the book, The Secret Valve, you know, yeah. that is the strongest book that taught me like what we think about, we bring about. You know, I was just using it today with the with Lily, the kid I was coaching today. And, you know, like she has this, she's trying to learn a Yurchenko double on Bolt. And it's always been a little bit of a nemesis. And I can tell right away when she has decided it's going to be a crash day. You know, I can see it in her body language, just like I can see when she's decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going after this today. And regardless of what I say, I could say, Lily, you are the best bolter in the whole world. But if she's destroying herself, it doesn't matter what I say. So you, first of all, girls, you have to be aware of your self-talk. Like you, we all have a voice in our head that talks to us all day long and you have to be aware of it and just get to know it because when you go to compete, that voice is your coach. That voice is your best friend. And you got to make sure that you're talking to yourself the same way you would want to be talked to like your best friend. So all of this talk, then you begin to, to get good habits of saying, you can do this, you're great, you got this, instead of, I'm weak, I really suck at this, I'm awful, I can't do this, because that's what you create. The right. minute that you change your thinking, the whole world opens up. I always thought it would be so great, like imagine the world if all of our thoughts played across our forehead. First of It'd all- It'd be scary. We would have a lot less mean girls out there, okay? Yeah. A lot more kind people out there. But imagine, guys, if you're in the gym and you're on bars and you're getting ready to go up, and imagine if what you're thinking is, is scrolling across your forehead and you're telling your coach, no, I got this. And across it's going, I suck at bars. How great would that be, right? So, or vice versa. Just imagine that everything that you're thinking is scrolling across your forehead for the whole world to see. I mean, it, that would stop me from thinking negative thoughts. I just thought about this anyway. Very uh, good. It's very good. I'm going to turn on the comments to ask for questions, but, um, but right before that, could you share with us, and I've never asked you this, so I don't even know what you're going to say, but could you share with us your most memorable or fun or silly Olympic memory? It's very easy. So in 96, we're getting ready to march out into the dome, the Georgia dome. And the whole crowd, however many thousands and thousands of people were there, were chanting really loud, USA, USA. And we're standing in a line, like in the tunnel, getting ready to go out. And it was, I mean, I had goosebumps 10 feet high on my arms. And I was like feeling a little like that. And I look over. And Dominique Dawes is in a ball on the floor, scared to death to walk out on the floor. And I remember Amanda going, Dom, we need you. Get up. That was the funny. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Here's this world-class Olympic athlete in a ball on the floor. And I'm thinking, are we going to be able to get her up to walk out on the floor? And Amanda was the captain at that time, and she did a great job of pumping her up. But that probably was the funniest moment I ever saw. That's, you know what's so great about that, too, is that it just shows that it's okay. You guys, it's okay, okay to be scared. It's, it's real. Okay. What would not have been okay if Dominique Dawes would have stayed in the little ball on the floor? That might not have been okay. Yeah. <laughs> that would not have been okay. All right, guys, I'm turning on the comments. So we Bye, can, Fergie. We can ask Mary anything she wants. I think somebody put French fries up there. I don't know if they did or not, but um, hi guys. I, don't you love the comments? I love you both. Inspired. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, gymnast. Come, but I know, didn't see that. Thank you so much. This is really helping. Good. I'm glad I can help. Chop wood carry water. Um, it's by Josh. Somebody. But if you go on Amazon and you just put it in, it'll come right up because it's really, really good. 
I think that another great book is the book you mentioned, The Secret. Yes. It does teach you. Yes. What was the phrase that you said? What you think about, you bring about. What you think about, you bring about. And so if you think, that's in life. That's with everything. It's not just Absolutely. Your- yeah. You know, when they say that, what's your, what was your memory? What was your memory? Oh, me? My memory? Or your memory. This, this, is about, this is about you. They don't need to care here about me. Um, but they keep putting French fries. Oh, are you great? Yes, that was a good one. Are you going to watch the 96 Olympics? It's on tonight at um, my time is 8 o'clock. So Eastern is 8 o'clock. I guess every night, maybe it's this week, um, or maybe it's every Friday night, they're going back and doing like all the different years of the Olympics highlights. So I know that tonight, um, because Amanda and JC both reminded me um, that the 96 Olympics is on tonight. And who are Amanda and JC? Oh, sorry. You know, you just forget. Um, Amanda Borden and JC Phelps are the two gymnasts that I hit on the 1996 Olympic team. And um, they both own gym clubs right now. Amanda owns two and JC owns one. What channel? What channel? It's on um, NBC Sports. Awesome. Oh, thank you. A French coach said this has really helped her. So thank you. That's Good. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda Borden was also the Olympic team captain, was she not? Yes, she was. Yeah. That's great. That's the year, you guys. That's the year that Dominique Mociano was on the team, and that's the year that Carrie Strug was on the team. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, if- there's one here, too, about you know, scared to go backwards. And um, I know that my gymnast, Lily, um, who could do full ends all of a sudden, couldn't do a back handspring. And we happened to have a really good sports psychiatrist, psychologist, I forget what her title was, that helped Lily. And she's the one who taught me a lot of how to deal with fear. And it's it's the muscle memory. And that's why, like how I said before about brain pathways, Like if you're afraid to do something on the beam or on the floor, bridge up and kick over, you know, doing anything that goes in the direction that you want to go, do it over and over, fly away, swing back and forth and just let go and land on the ground, get comfortable with that, then swing up and land on your back. So if you just think about the skill, where it is that you're afraid of and create something that you can make your mind do that part of the skill. Someone asked about half pirouettes. Half pirouettes, so well, there's a blind change half and there's an inside. So if you're going to do just a half pirouette on the low bar, kick up to a handstand against the wall and do a lot of one arm shoulder touches or hip touches to learn how to transfer your weight back and forth. And that so you get really strong on one arm or the other arm. This is so great. So many of your gymnasts are here saying, I can't wait to go back to CGA, to your gym. Um... Great. The best way to get a full out is um, like when you do a double back is to say one, two. So you know where the second flip is. It's really important because a lot of times athletes just let go to go of the bar and chuck two flips, but don't really let their mind connect to their body and feel flip one and flip two. So then once you feel flip half, uh, feel flip two, then you learn to get upside down on flip two. And all you have to do is drop your shoulder and you'll do a half turn. All you have to do is drop something down, and then your hips will go up. Clear hips. Clear hips. Get that core strong, number one. You got to be able to do, like, you know, those chin levers like this, and then turn upside down into a candle, turn upside down into a candle, because most of the time, um, kids struggle with clear hips because of their core. So a lot of really good holly, hollow rockers. And jump to candle on your bed, you guys. If mom allows you or the couch, the more you can turn upside down like that, and the more you can be on your hands, walk around the house, walk around outside, walk forward, backwards, sideways. Um, all of that is going to help your gymnastics because essentially we do handstands on every event. Okay. So how do you, this was something that I really struggled with coaching um, athletes when it came to UCLA, athletes that bend their knees on back handsprings on beam. How, what can they be doing right now? to work on the jump and the push to get their legs straight on their back handsprings on beam. Okay, this is um, one of the ones that Tammy taught me that's excellent. And so like, let's say you're, we'll use the bed since you're at home. And if you just stand by your bed and you jump up and you snap your feet out to a pike position, lock your knees and point your toes, 
that teaches you how to push out of your ankles, Achilles, everything in the bottom part of your foot to extend and point. Then once you're sitting on your bed in a pike position with your legs straight and your toes pointed, count to 10 and just burn and curl your feet and your toes as hard as you can. And that helps everything, not just back handsprings, but that's a good one for back handsprings. That's great. That's awesome. Um, we need healthy. We do need healthy. Now's the time to fuel your guys. Just fuel yourself. Everything that you're eating or drinking, it's either making you stronger or weaker. Yep. One or the other. Yep. Um, Look. <laughs> sweets. No. Sugar is poison, you guys. Sugar is poison. This is great. Thank you. I love, I love Mary Lee's passion. I have a question for Mary Lee. What do you love about gymnastics so much? Why? My favorite thing, and it's my love to inspire people to believe they can do something sometimes when they can't believe it. Like, that's, the, that's why I keep doing this. I mean, you've been to the Olympics. You've done this. You had all those kids on the team. Why are, would you still be doing this? Because I, I love it, especially when a kid – an athlete doesn't think they can do something and I can help them believe that they can like that. Don't you feel, I don't care if it's a back walk over on beam, a glide kip on bars, like those little things like that can sometimes give me goosebumps. You know, it's not just teaching a full in or a double, double that is thrilling. It's just getting kids to believe they can be great at whatever they're doing. I love having no social life. Me too. <laughs> Somebody said something about flexibility. Yeah. Um, you know, there's two kinds of flexibility. There's active and there's passive. So first you want to work on your passive and you want to always start with passive because you want to get your muscles uh, very warm. So like if, you, if you're not all the way down, don't elevate. I mean, a lot of people stick their leg up to here and they can't even do it on the floor. So really just sitting in the splits, breathing, letting your muscles lengthen, like trying to push your toes as far in two directions. And if you're all the way down in the splits, then you start elevating. You can elevate just the front leg, just the back leg, or you can elevate both legs. But nothing makes flexibility come greater than sitting there. They say uh, 30, 30 seconds is the only way to get a true stretch. Without, a without holding it for 30 seconds, you're just warming up. So there's a difference between increasing your flexibility and warming up. Warming up is right split, left split, straddle split, bridge up. That's warming up to train. But if you want to increase your flexibility, then you're going to need to sit in whatever those positions are, or if it's a bridge, opening your armpits up, whatever it is. But stay in it. And then for active, like while you're at home, all types of kicks and swings. So bot mons is kicks. So that's like snapping up and down, up and down, and coming down into a nice controlled position, whether it's first position, fifth position, feet together, but coming down controlled. Then a lot of the leg swings, making sure that you swing as high in the front, as high in the back, because that's really going to create an equal split. Laying on your back, kicking over your head, right and left, legs up at the top, straddle, all of that is going to help your flexibility. And you need to do, if you're on a panel mat or something, like I know a lot of kids have panel mats, or I see a lot of kids with these air uh, tumble track air floors. Goodness gracious, that's awesome. Because then you can start doing the punching and the splitting and all of that kind of stuff, which probably is one of the better things, but not everybody has that luxury. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, we've got one more question you can take. Make it a good one, Mary Lee. Cast handstands. Because at home, if you don't have a bar, how do I work my cast handstand? Think about how many kids struggle with cast handstands. Right. So the first thing you got to know is you've got to be, your chest has to be able to be strong. So not even doing push-ups, but just holding that push-up shape and what I call a turtle back, make your upper back round and squeeze your bottom. Like, you've got to be able to do that. And then from that position, rocking your shoulders forward, which is where kids get afraid to cast because they don't want to lean over the bar. So if you have a floor rail or not, just rocking back and forth in a push-up position is going to help your handstand. Um, the other thing is, um, those of you that are doing straddle cast, which is almost everybody, standing against a wall in that straddle position and closing your legs as quick as you can at the top, and bringing them back down, putting your hands on your couch and or your bed or a block or a chair and going jump, 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 straddle, close your legs at the top. All of that's going to help your handstands. Love it. 
I, I felt like I could do a handstand listening to you. This Great. Is, this is so good. Okay, so you guys, let's give it up. A lot of, a lot of little claps here, a lot of thank yous for Mary Lee Tracy. She is literally one of the most brilliant minds in this thank you. in the world. And we thank you so much for being with us today on this Friday as we go into the weekend. Super motivating. Um, okay, so we're going to finish with my favorite, I yes. Am Mints. Um, as Mary Lee was talking about, that mind-body connection. Think of that one word that you just love to think about and say out loud because it makes you feel invincible. So we're all going to write in here in big capital letters. Mary Lee, you're doing this too. I am. I, oh. and there you go. I am. And then write your word. And on the count of three, we're going to hit post. And they're all going to start flooding up. Okay. One, two, three, hit post. I am patient. <laughs> that's you, Mary Lee. Good job. That's what I need to be because that's what I want to be. All right. Nice stuff. I am hungry. Well, you're being honest. Yes, I'm better than you. Great girls. I am confident. I am resilient, falling down, getting back up. That's huge. Self-motivated. Great stuff. I'm brave. Love so when those negative thoughts start spiring, use your affirmation statement. Mila Brush, I am determined. Way to go. Yay. <laughs> yes, use this. I am. It's called an affirmation statement. I am. I am strong. I am confident. I can do it. Nice job, girls. This is great. All right, you guys, keep up these statements, okay? All day and all weekend long. All righty? Have a great, great day. Love you guys. Stay strong. Thank you. Thanks, Miss Val. Bye, Merely. Bye. Mary Lee. Bye.